Good morning, my name is Ralph Friedrichs and welcome to Take Your Life Back. Today we're going to talk about something that we discuss almost in each and every one of my videos, probably for the last at least 80 videos, and that is, is how to be a role model. What is a role model? Who should be a role model? And what should you never ever do as a role model but before we go into that let's talk about Luis Gonzalez that is Dr. Luis Gonzalez from startingpointmn.com that's S-T-A-R-T-I-N-G P-O-I-N-T M-N.com that's startingpointmn.com he is at 844-414-8444 Dr. Luis Gonzalez does two of two things on one side of his business he does exactly what I do and that he walks from your addiction to your recovery daily with you 24 hours at a time. Like myself, he will never ever talk about your past. We only work on today and we worry about tomorrow. We will help you fight your addiction daily. On the other side of his business, he can turn you into an addiction recovery coach. If you have the passion, personality and professionalism and you have some experience with addiction, whether it being your own or uh, helping somebody else. He can also put you through his educational program and you could be a graduate like I was from Dr. Luis Gonzalez at 844-414-8444. That's startingpointmn.com. My websites consist of uh, two separate websites. The first one is for um, www.clearviews.info and what clearviews.info is is a informational based uh, website purely for addiction and recovery we have articles we have stories we have over a hundred videos and what we do we let you folks out there go to that website and educate yourself learn how to fight with your addiction learn how to look uh, at other people and and see if they have an addiction that you might be able to help we have articles and videos uh, by doctors psychologists and psychiatrists they are the cl clinical people uh, that um, let us uh, view their items um, right on my website and then I have my own uh, videos over 130 of them and my own videos are every topic you can imagine anywhere from fetal syndrome to uh, steps on uh, eating alcoholism uh, also on marijuana usage whatever the subject we have it on it however if there is something that you have not seen on www.clearviews.info, let me know and I will make sure that we will address that topic that you are so interested in. You can text me at 631-599-0218 or you can call me at 844-405-HELP. You can also email me at clearreform at yahoo.com. That's C-L-E-A-R-R-E-F-O-R-M at yahoo.com. Let me know what you want me to talk about uh, during the next week or two, and I will make sure it happens. On my other website, which is www.clearreform.com, that is also like Dr. Luis Gonzalez. That is where I will be your addiction recovery coach, if you want me to be, and I will walk you from your addiction to your recovery. There's a bridge, and we will walk across every 24 hours daily together. I will also, like Dr. Lewis Gonzalez from startingpointmn.com, not talk about your past. I am not a counselor or a therapist. I am purely a master addiction recovery coach. That is what we're going to do today. I mean, uh, do together. So uh, you have those factors. And I also want to give a shout out to somebody I, I haven't done for a while, and that is Pam Hemphill. And you can find her on Facebook. Her show, it's a TV uh, talk show, which concentrates on recovery, is Time to Heal. And that is on Facebook. You just type in Time to Heal in the search bar. Her name is Pam Hemphill. Uh, she's been gracious enough to run my commercials uh, on her show. Uh, if you go to my website, uh, www.clearviews.info, you will find her uh, page listed. Uh, you hit More, and then you'll see Time to Heal. Go there, and I believe I have uh, just about her last 17 or 18 episodes. The last episode was very interesting. You need to see it. Go to www.clearviews.info or go to Facebook. Uh, you can find Time to Heal there, Pam Hemphill, or you can go to YouTube and just type in Time to Heal, uh, episode one, episode two, whatever you want to look at, and you will find it there too. Let's go right to this. How to be a role model. Again, you can always tell when I'm talking passionately from my heart and when I'm reading. So this is going to be a combination of both. Uh, we're going to start with the reading. I always say 
that the best role model is the role model that practices what they preach. If I don't want you to smoke, I shouldn't smoke in front of you. If I don't want you to drink, I shouldn't drink in front of you. So you get the message there. But if you tell them to have good manners, they don't talk with their mouth full, that is a uh, practice what you preach. Don't you tell them that while you're chewing away. If you tell them to keep their room clean, then keep your room clean as well. Don't let them walk into your bedroom and finding it, it's, it's a mess when you're trying to get them to keep their room clean. If you're always asking your children to eat healthier foods, let them see that you're choosing salad over french fries. Every once in a while that would be nice. Practice what you preach. That is such an easy concept to go by. Lead by example, folks. Example would be not to smoke and drink and use profanity or physically abuse a person. That would be leading by example. Apologize when you make a mistake. Don't put pressure on yourself to be a flawless parent who never makes a single mistake. You will make mistakes. I make mistakes. We all make mistakes. But you need to own your mistakes and apologize. So you need to apologize when you make a mistake. You need to think out loud. Your children don't have to see that you as a person uh, always keeps everything within themselves. In fact, you can help them out by, by showing them that you can think out loud and then what your thoughts are, your children will also have an input. However, you have to be careful not to take this idea too far. You don't want to end up having to explain your reasoning to your child every time you make a decision that's a decision that's out loud. Otherwise, it may get very exhausting and you will lose, lose its power or your power as a parent. Follow through. Another must for a parent who wants to be a good role model is to back up what they say. If you tell your children they are punished, they're grounded, you need to follow through. You can't uh, uh, two hours later say, okay, forgive and forget, you're not punished anymore. You need to follow through. If you tell your child she won't be able to go out to the mall with her friends, if she doesn't finish her homework, then you need to stick to that. Is the homework done? Great. Now you can go out. If it's not done, not so great. You're not going out. Treat everyone, including your children, with respect. Everyone. Let me just put this down a little bit, folks. That's not just certain people. Everyone needs to be treated with respect. If you want to be a good role model for your children, then you have to treat everyone around you with respect from the handyman to the neighbors. You can't tell your children to be kind to everyone and let them see that you're mad-mouthing your friends, your neighbors, or other people at your job. Uh, you might be talking negative at the dinner table to your wife or your husband about uh, other people. That is not leading by example. You need to be very and I repeat, very consistent. Another thing you have to do is, as a good role model for your kids is to be consistent in the way you keep the order in your household. If you have a rule that your children can't play with their friends until they've done their homework, then you have to enforce it every time instead of m making exceptions based on how badly your children want to uh, uh, play with their friends. You can pick and choose um, what rules you're going to enforce and which ones you're not going to. It goes through with the follow through concept right here. You need to be consistent when you follow through. Treat your partner with respect. Your relationship with your partner, if you have one, may be one of the most important relationships for your children to see. Though no relationship is perfect, you show, that your, ch you show your children that the two people working together and love each other can and will compromise on certain decisions. That will show your children that there is unity between you and your partner. When the unity has a crack or uh, has any type of uh, gap within their relationship, children will feed on that. One parent becomes the good cop, one parent becomes the bad cop. So you need to unite with your husband or your wife. Show an interest in the material, whether you're teaching organic chemistry or basic grammar. You need to start showing interest uh, with your child's homework, with anything that they possibly are have an interest in, you need to show some sort of interest, interest even if you don't like what they're looking at. Pretend. Let me read what it says. 
You have to show that you are excited about the War of 1812. I'm not excited, but you have to pretend to your children. The Canterbury Tales, fact, factor, uh, factoring equations, or whether whatever it is you're teaching that day, your enthusiasm will be infectious and will show the students the importance of caring about what they are learning. When you show enthusiasm, so will they. Follow your own rules. What is that? This is one of the pretty straightforward. If you tell your students not to be late to class, don't be late to class. If you have no cell phone policy in your home, keep your phone off during uh, dinner and all that as well. If you tell your kids that they can't eat um, before dinner, then you shouldn't be munching on things. Don't play favorites with your, with your children. You really can't. If you have three children, treat them equally. In your mind, you might have a favorite one, but don't play favorites to them. Treat everybody on an equal level. And again, you need to admit your mistakes. You remember, apologize for your mistakes? Well, you need to admit them too. What it says is, this is one, uh, this one is a bit tricky. You want your children to see that you as a person with, uh, uh, that has answers, and you're the person that administers the rules in the house. But when your children see you make a mistake, you also have to be the person to first admit your mistake and then apologize for your mistake. Ask for feedback from your children. The, though uh, asking um, your, your children to, to come up with any kind, of fee, any kind of feedback that might be beneficial for them, uh, but it, the feedback they might give you might also make you a better parent as well. Uh, whether it being good or bad feedback, it, it does help for you to get that feedback because it will uh, in, indirectly educate you to be a better parent. And you know what? We're not perfect as a husband. We're not perfect as a wife. We're not perfect as parents either. And it is sometimes the husband or wife to point it out to each other what needs improvement. And the same goes with children. They need to point out to the parents, not in the way to say, well, I think this is how you become a better uh, parent, but to get the feedback from them and that allows you then to build a new foundation. Uh, you need to apologize uh, when, when you um, hurt like your children's feelings. When you say something about, let's say your daughter comes home with a new guy and uh, you don't like the way the guy looks or talks, be gently, uh, gentle on how you approach talking to your daughter about that. Don't call him some racial name or uh, nationality names. Uh, just don't become an Archie Bunker. Proceed with caution. Remember your daughter, your son, they have feelings and, and you certainly don't want to, uh, to, to hurt those feelings. If you, want, uh, if you want to do something on your own, explain why. If your children, let's say dad, you're out in the garage and you want to, I don't know, work on your engine and your son comes out and he wants to help, but you totally want to do it on your own because A, something you've been looking forward to, or B, is because you don't want uh, any damages to happen to your engine. You need to really explain uh, why you want to do it on your own uh, to your child. If you want to be left alone for a while or want just to hang out uh, with your, like in this case, your car alone, don't just tell your, your child to, you know, get lost or scram. Explain to him why this is daddy's alone time. Why don't you go and maybe, uh, you know, go out with your friends or here, it's $5 and go and get yourself a piece of candy or something to that effect. You need to tell your children, as a good role model, you need to tell your children to do well in school. You don't have to be uh, a straight student. You have to tell them, don't, it's not important to be a straight A student in, in order to be um, a uh, successful person in life. But what you do want to do is encourage them to constantly um, study and constantly be active in the school activities. You want to also tell your children, you as the role model, is that both your children, if you have two or three or four, they don't need to compete each other to, to get you to love them anymore. You, as the mommy or daddy, grandparent or legal guardian, will love your children across the board equally. So they don't need to compete. It's likely that your younger uh, children uh, will want to talk like you. They want to dress like you. Your son wants to look just like dad. Perfect example would be, remember in Jaws the movie, 
where the um, the father was going like this, and then the son was going like this, and then the father went like that. You could see the son was drawing attention. He wanted to do whatever the father was doing. Tell your children to be themselves. Tell your children that they don't have to be like you, and certainly tell your children that you love them daily. Don't pressure your children to do something more, uh, um, more than they really can handle. In other words, if, if you feel that your child is not doing enough at home, start with little steps. If the room is totally messed up, they're not doing their homework, and uh, the dog hasn't been walked, don't say A, B, and C have to be done right now. Start with A. John, please clean your room. When that's completed, give him a little bit of time to relax. And then, John, walk the dog. Be a good role model because when your son, your daughter see you with a calm voice, you with that leadership role that you are supposed to possess, that will show Johnny that you are a good role model. And he will write all this in his uh, chapters in his book of life, which we're going to discuss. Include your children in, in a lot of activities at home. That is so important. Include your wife, your husband, include your children. You as the role model of the home need to be involved in everybody's life. You need to bring everybody together, unite as a family. You need to do four things every day at home and you need to quit four things every day at home. Those are the things you have to do. But you also need to be the mature adult, the role model in your home, and make sure that everybody has their place and at your home. If you're the husband, you're the role model, make sure that you and your wife work together as two co-role models. A role model is not just put on the husband or not just put on the wife. It is put on by two united people as a couple. You have to be in sync with each other. You can't jump from one thing to the next thing uh, and then have your wife do something totally different or your husband. You need to combine your forces together to be that perfect role model. And I'm going to tell you the four things you should never do. You should never smoke in your home. You should never drink in your home. You should never use profanity at your home. And you should never ever anywhere whether it's your home or anywhere else, use physical violence. Here's four things that you should have in your home. You should have respect. You should have love. You should have uh, uh, compassion. And you should have emotional contact with your children. What are the action plans to get rid of those four things that you should not have? If you need to smoke, smoke somewhere else smoke outside if you need to drink you do the same don't drink in your home if you come to the point in life where you need to drink every day and you can't live without it you are watching the perfect video you're watching a alcoholic talking to you right now and I am here to tell you that you can live without alcohol but if you do need to drink and you're not ready for a rock bottom do it away from your home if you need to use that filthy profanity that's not in the Webster Dictionary, do it outside your home. And if you're in your home, go to the bathroom and do it where it belongs, which is in the toilet. If you are one of those people that physically abuses people, you need therapy or counseling, folks. And if you're the victim of physical abuse, you need to call the authorities. Let the authorities take the abuser out in handcuffs and seek help on the outside so your loved one who was just taken out in handcuffs possibly will come back a better person than the authorities coming to take you out in a body bag because you won't be coming back. Death is irreversible. People going seeing counseling and therapy can change. So if you're the victim of an abuser, you need to do something. And here are the four things that we talked about that need to be done and what are the action plans. For the love, you need to unite husband and wife, husband or partner, 
wife or partner, whatever, unite and show love consistently and constantly to the whole entire family. You need to show compassion. If your son has issues, peer pressure, or your daughter, show compassion. Tell them you've been through this. Tell them your experiences. Teach them. You need to show respect. If your son or daughter have issues, don't just shoot them down and shake it off. Show respect. Show respect to your spouse, to your partner. And you need to be emotional. If your son or daughter are crying about something, show them that you have an emotion. Don't be so cold-faced like I, for a lot of years, have been, was. And that was due to the United States Marine Corps. They turned me into somewhat of a robot. However, I have shown more emotion and more compassion. Those are the four things that you need those action plans for to have in your home. Because if you get rid of those other four things and you add these four things, that is like letting sunshine into your heart and into your home would give you nothing but positive results. These four things are all darkness and negative results. The other four things, com respect, compassion, uh, passion, and love, that's all sunshine. That is positive results, folks. That is the gist of being a role model. You need to be a role model. Lead by example. If you tell them have good manners, you need to show good manners. If you tell them to keep their room clean, you need to keep your bedroom clean. If you're asking your, your children to eat healthier foods, you need to eat healthier foods in front of them. If you tell them not to smoke, you definitely shouldn't smoke. If you tell them don't drink, you shouldn't be drinking. If you're telling them not to use foul mouth language, certainly you shouldn't be using it. And if you tell them not to go and bully other people, do not be a bully in your home. You need to apologize when you make a mistake. Nobody is too big to apologize. You need to think out loud. Let your children know what you're thinking. Let your wife know what you're thinking. You need to follow through. When you set rules in your house as the role model, you need to follow through. Don't pick and choose how your moods are and how you're following through on your rules. You need to treat everyone, including your children, with respect. We talked about that. Everyone. That even goes down to your dog or your cat. You need to be consistent on anything that is any house rules. You need to be consistent. If the garbage goes out on a Tuesday, it goes on a Tuesday, not a Wednesday. You need to uh, treat your partner with respect. If your children see you and your partner united, they will unite with you as a family. You need to show interest in your children's daily activities, including their homework. Even though you don't want to hear about the war in 1882, because you've heard it many a time, show interest. You need to follow through with your own rules. Don't bend the rules for you, but enforce them for them. Don't play favorites with anyone. You have six children, they're all equally the same. You need to admit your mistakes. It's first you admit your mistake, and then the rule number one, you apologize for your mistake. You're not big enough to, or too big to apologize to your wife, your husband, or your children. Ask for feedback from your children at dinner table. Because when you get feedback, it might help you mold yourself or your children's situations into a better uh, environment. You need to apologize when you hurt your son or your daughter's feelings by saying something that was out of line. You need to do that. Because when you show them that you can apologize for hurting their feelings when they hurt your feelings, they will come around to apologize to you. If you want to do things on your own in the garage or in the kitchen, don't just shoot them down and kick them out. Do something constructive by possibly uh, telling them you wanted a little bit of alone time, but here's five dollars, go to the store. Please emphasize for them to do well in school. However, don't expect them or don't tell them they have to have straight A's. Nobody did. How many people have become successful in life not having straight A's? Folks, you learn so much more in life than you'd learn at school. I am not saying you shouldn't have straight A's. I'm just saying don't expect your children by telling them they have to have it. Your children, if they get the love and the guidance from you as the role model, will do the best they can with the proper role modelship from you. 
If you see your ch children compete with each other for your love, tell them not to compete. Your love is unconditional to equally to all of them. Don't pressure your children on telling you things that's going on in their personal life like what's in their diary. If they want you to know something, they will. This is why I always say during my role model uh, little uh, talks that we have is that a dinner table is an open forum. You will learn so much. Yes, husband and wife in today's society with the economy being as, as uh, drastic and high it is, uh, as it is cost-wise, husband and wife do have to work. However, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights can and should be the nights of family dinner together. Show your children, even you as the role model, you as the authority figure in the home, also you are not perfect. No one is. Include your children in activities, family outings, game nights. You need to be more mature than your children. If your children yell at you, don't yell back. Show them the maturity level that you are supposed to possess. If you do all these things and you don't do those four things, smoke, drink, uh, profanity, and physical abuse, and you do these four things, which is compassion, love, emotion, and respect, that will give you a perfect platform to be a good role model. And being a good role model is going to include the chapters in the book of life of your children and your own book. Your children's book and your book all start at your birth and your children's book. It is you as the role model that have to be part of the chapters from 0 to 18 for your children. You, in conjunction with your children, will be writing every chapter of every, uh, of every year. In other words, one year is one chapter. 18 would be 18 chapters. It is you that have to help write that. Because if you don't include these four things and include those other four things that we spoke about in your children's book, chapters in their book, all the way up to 18, you have now molded them to go into society with a shield around them. But if you don't do that, you, what you're doing is creating a situation that they saw you drink, smoke, use profanity, and physical abuse, that they go to, into society and they're going to blend right in because that's all they're going to get from there. My book of life started in 61. <clears throat> At 17, chapter 17, I left home, went to college. At chapter 19, I uh, graduated college, went into the Marine Corps. Became a lay leader in the Marine Corps, which is pretty much what an addiction recovery coach is, only in the military sense with uh, religion attached to it. And I would be the liaison between a uh, recruit and a chaplain. Chapter 22, I had an accident in Beirut, Lebanon. We had a, ba a bombing. God protected me. God protected me from certain death. We're going to fast forward now to chapter, let's see, 47, 2009. God protected me again. I had an accident in Alaska. But all those chapters from 17 to 47 included one thing in every chapter, and that was called alcoholism. So here we are, chapter 47. From chapter 47 to chapter 50, the alcoholism increased dramatically, because I was home, I wasn't working, I was in physical therapy. Now let's go, go right to chapter 52. Chapter 52 is rock bottom for me. Chapter 52 is rock bottom for me. That is when new chapters started being rewritten by me that will never ever include alcoholism again. God protected me twice from certain death, from accidents. God protected me three times or four times from possible overdose due to my alcoholism. So chapter 52, till the end of my book, whenever that might be, could be at 60, could be at 54, it could be at 80, I don't know. That is in God's hand. But chapter 52 and on have been good chapters, that included no alcoholism at all. They included chapters as in helping other people, included chapters as in uh, 
fighting my addiction included chapters as in compassion and love towards people. I guess you understand what it is, the book of life, from chapter 1 to chapter whenever your end is. People will remember you at the last chapters. So if today, October 1st, 2014, you want to change the chapters in your book of life, let's figure out a method for you to do that. If you want to get rid of your drug abuse or your alcohol abuse, go to AA or uh, what's the other one, NA. They have the 12 steps. They have uh, the 90-90, which is 90 meetings in 90 days. They have a constructed program since 1936 that has helped millions. I did try, but I need to be more actively involved in front of a camera is one way. Because a voice and a, and a face tell you more that I am human with an, in a disease called alcoholism and that I'm here to testify to you that there is life other than alcohol. I am here to tell you I am not ashamed to admit that I have a disease. In turn, I'd like for you to admit of your either drug and or alcohol abuse because the only way you're going to conquer this and learn to fight with it is two ways. The first way is to stop denying and the second way is to include God, your higher power. You can live with God without addiction, but you cannot fight addiction without God. That's a simple, plain truth. AA will tell you that. My methods at www.clearviews.info will tell you that. A treatment center will tell you that. If you need to go to a treatment center because you cannot uh, function at home without even attempting or being tempted by using alcohol and drugs, do the 30, 60, and 90 day programs. I say this all the time. They take insurance, they take Medicaid, and even if they don't, look for a place through your state website or text me at 631 599 0218. I will try to help you find a place that possibly will take you in with any funds or any uh, insurance. Don't know how successful it will be, but we can give it a shot. I know I was successful with somebody up in New Hampshire. But folks, you need to do two things. You need to include your God, your higher power, and you need to stop denying that you have a problem. When I hit rock bottom, I knew I hit rock bottom. All the times before, six, seven times, I always said, I'm quitting. And I did quit for a short period amount of time, and I had a relapse. Folks, if you have a relapse, dust your knees, pick yourself up, take a self-inventory, and go forward, move forward. Never, ever, ever give up on yourself or give up on others or go back to the old abuse again. When you have a rel relapse, it's one step back, but then take two steps forward. Don't take two steps back and then one step forward. Do it the opposite way. Take one step back, that's your relapse, and then take two steps forward. And for the amount of time that you did actually quit drinking or quit doing drugs before you had that relapse, that is time that you gained back in your life. Whether it was a day, a week, a year. Folks, if you can't go by the 24-hour rule, not a rule, but some thing that people say, go day by day, 24 hours a time, if you can't do that, because it's just too long. Break it up into four six-hour shifts or three eight-hour shifts. Or if it's 10 o'clock now, wherever you're watching me in the morning, stay sober till 10.10. You just gained 10 minutes back to your life. You just gained more ability to keep writing chapters in your book of life. Your book of life. Those chapters starting today, October 1st, 2014, can include, I gave up drinking. I gave up doing drugs. Let those chapters be rewritten by you. Let people remember you when you're gone as a person that changed their lifestyle, their personality, and their being themselves. Because once you quit your alcohol and your drugs, you will change automatically. You might not see it right away, but you will change. You'll change it in physical aspects. You'll feel it in an emotional aspect. And other people will notice it. 
Believe me, they will notice it. One way to start is tonight, when you take your slippers, your shoes, or your sneakers off before you go to bed, and you put it at the edge of your bed, push them under your bed. That way, when you wake up tomorrow morning, you'll be forced to go on your knees to go and get your slippers, shoes, or sneakers. And while you're on your knees, thank your Lord, your God, or your higher power for another day that He is giving you or allowing you to be on this earth. When you take that a breath like, isn't that nice to be able to breathe? Well, remember, there is someone on this earth that is now, as we speak, taking their last breath. There is someone that can't blink like this. Because when they close their eyes, it's the last time they will ever close their eyes or open them again. Thank God that you have another day on this earth. Let today, October 1st, 2014, be the rest of your life. The change is so minimal to just stop drinking and stop drugging. It's minimal. What is the hard part is how to live with it. Or in some cases, how to live without the alcohol and the drugs. That is where people like Dr. Luis Gonzalez, people like myself, come in hand. We are there, step by step for you. It's people like the treatment centers, people like AA. We are all soldiers in this war on drugs and alcohol. People like Pam. She just went down to Washington for the Fed Up rally. It is people like us and people like you that will make this world a better world. A new acquaintance, people like Annie Welch. People like her that are interested in learning how to help other people. Those are the people that are out there. And every time I do these videos, if I could just help two people, myself will definitely get help. And maybe one person out of my thousands in my audience daily. Listen to the interviews, and I'm sure you have already if you're watching this, in the beginning of this. Those are real people with real stories. That's why you'll hear profanity of the last fella. I will not edit that out because that is his real story. His story is pretty sad, if you ask me. He still drinks alcohol, but he's beaten the drug uh, uh, arena. Got locked up for 16 years. Gets out of jail. Gets uh, exp expedited down to Florida. The minute he walked out of one jail, they picked him up and brought him down there. Hold him for almost eight weeks to tell him, I'm sorry we held you. The reason we held you is because there was some paperwork shuffle mix-up. They didn't give him a ticket back to Florida. They didn't give him any money and left him down there to get back. He is the perfect candidate to go back to doing drugs. Yet, he has learned to live with not doing the drugs. He still drinks alcohol. But he's learned not to do the drugs anymore. Those are real people with real stories. In the beginning, the pastor. He says people like me going out there to fight. It's people like me, Dr. Gonzalez, Pam. People who want to learn how to go out and fight. People like Annie. It is all of us, and it could be you, that need to come together as a community. To show our lessons how it will empower addiction recovery. Clear views, clear reform, clear community lessons empower addiction recovery. It's that simple. We talked about the role model, how to be a good one. We talked about the book of life. We talk about, if you're ready today, October 1st, 2014, to finally admit that you have a problem and reach to the Lord. What are the methods? AA, my methods, treatment centers. They all have to include one thing, and that's your higher power. Remember, you can live with God without addiction, but you can't live with addiction without God, or you can't battle addiction without God. Plain and simple. And for anyone that wants to dispute that, good luck trying to. AA will tell you to reach the higher power. I will tell you because I do it daily. On Sundays, I always post my spiritual lift-me-ups. Because they really do work, folks. 
My spirits are lifted every time I hear a certain song that is played on one of my videos. When I look at the little uh, pictures that I put up with the quotes, I get the lift of my life daily from that. And so can you. We all need to have a lift me up. And it's not the alcohol lift me up or the drug. It is our children. It is our spouse, our partner, our God. Those are lift me ups that will not hurt you. But if you need to lift me up because of your alcohol and your drugs, those are lift me ups that will bring you down. That lift up will come down again. Your children, your wife, your partner, your God, those are lift me ups that will stay up there. They will lift higher and higher. And the better you become as being a role model, and you don't do those four things, the drinking, the drug, uh, the smoking, the uh, physical abuse, and the profanity, and you do the love, respect, uh, compassion, and emotion in your home. Those are lift-me-ups that will stay with you being a role model. I'm going to touch up on this role model real quickly now. Practice what you preach. If you want your, uh, your children's room to be clean, show them that your room can be clean, your bedroom. If you want your kids to eat healthy, you need to show them that you can eat salad as well. You need to apologize when you make a mistake, and you need to own your mistakes and then apologize. You need to think out loud sometimes. Let your children th know what you're thinking, that you're not a robot. You need to follow through on anything that you implement in your own home. You need to uh, treat everyone, including your children, with respect. It goes right down to your cats and your dogs. You need to be consistent on everything that is implemented at home. Don't pick and choose certain rules. You need to pe treat your spouse or your partner with respect and not just in front of your children at all times. You need to show interest in your children's whether it's their homework or their interest. You need to show interest. Show them that you really do care. Show them that compassion. You need to follow through on your own rules. You can pick and choose the rules that you want to follow. You don't play favorites with any of your children. They should equally be loved by you. Admit your mistakes we addressed. Ask for feedback during dinner from your children. How can you become a better parent? And that is based on what your children might tell you. Apologize when you hurt your children with maybe saying something that you didn't mean. If you want to be alone for a while, you want to work on your car, gently break it to your children, uh, but don't go out there and uh, just shut them down. Gently break it to them. Give them some money to go to school. I mean to go to the store. Tell your children, enforce your, or, or enforce the fact that you want your children to, to do well in school, but don't make it sound like you expect only A's. Don't compete. Make sure that you don't have your children compete for each, with each other to get your respect. Respect and love your children equally. Don't pressure your children to talk if they don't want to talk. Show your wife, your husband, your partner, and yourself that you are not perfect. We, we Not all of us are. Include your children in activities when it's appropriate, like family nights and family outings. Be more mature than your children. Remember, your children are your children. Help your children write their chapters from 0 to chapter 18 daily with your leadership, with your knowledge. At 18, they'll go on their own. They'll write their own chapters just as much as you're writing yours. Let your chapters start changing like mine did when in, uh, at 52. That's when my chapters started changing. Actually, I was 51. I shouldn't say that because it was June 22nd. My birthday's now until October. So at 51, my chapters started changing, to not to include alcoholism in it anymore. Change yours. Try it. Dr. Luis Gonzalez, startingpointmn.com. S-T-A-R-T-I-N-G-P-O-I-N-T-M-N dot com, 844-414-8444, Pam Hempel, she's on Facebook, Time to Heal Show, the sh show uh, concentrates on recovery, you can find her on YouTube under Time to Heal, Pam Hempel. Go to my website, www.clearviews.info or www.clearreform.com. You can find me on Facebook. We have an open group, Clear Reform. We have pages, clearviews.info and Clear Reform. You can also find me on Twitter, blog, uh, blogger, I should say, uh, Dig, Dogpile, Bing, uh, Google. Um, so there's plenty of avenues to get a hold of me. Text me at 631 599 218 
or call me at 844-405-HELP. Folks, we had a really good session, but I want to emphasize, let the sunshine into your heart and then into your home, and you will get nothing but positive results. And never, ever give up on yourself and never give up on others. And remember, a sober today will guarantee you a better tomorrow. That I promise you. And always remember to thank your higher power for another day that you get to breathe and open your eyes because somewhere in life or in this globe or this world, there's someone that is taking their last breath and closing their eyes forever. So thank your higher power that you are sitting here watching this video right now. Folks, I say this all the time. Please have a remainder of this day to be a sober day and God bless you.